You begin this life alone. But there are others exactly like you. So we stopped by a meeting room here uh, at GDC to find out a little bit more what CCP games are doing right now. And it's quite a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. Can you just give us a li brief outlook on, on what the next few months are ahead are like? Okay. Yeah, we got uh, pretty exciting times ahead. I mean, we have been running now uh, Dust514 in open beta since uh, January. And during that process, we have, of course, gathered a lot of useful data both on, on player behavior and also just in feedback that players have been giving us on the forums. And it was always clear to us that, you know, we had our ideas for what we wanted to build, but those ideas would have to be influenced, of course, by the feedback that we would get. And also just, you know, new ideas would emerge from that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're seeing now with the uprising release that we're going to be pushing out on May 6th for Dust514. And in that, you're going to see now new levels of interactions between the two games. We're releasing a new game mode called uh, Planetary Conquest that is allowing the Dust mer Mercenaries to actually lay claim to the planets of New Eden. And in doing so, they're gaining uh, a lot of interesting advantages. You know, It's providing them with clone supplies to fuel their war, war machine. And eventually, it's also going to lead to interesting effects on New Eden as a whole. We're not disclosing at this point exactly what that is. Uh, we will be uh, discussing some more of those details at our annual Fan Fest, which is coming up uh, next month in April. And that's also where we're going to be showing this build for the first time and allow uh, people to play it hands-on before it comes out to the public on the PlayStation Network on May 6th. Now, in conjunction th with this, of course, we're releasing uh, the uh, summer expansion for EVE, which is going to be coming out a little later. And uh, that is named Odyssey. And with Odyssey, we're also bringing out a number of new and exciting features. We're continuing to polish things. Uh, just as an example, we're making the hangar views uh, more pleasing on the eye. And uh, I think that's a great improvement because a lot of our players like to uh, spin their ship. And uh, having a nice environment to do that is, I think, is a good thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a lot coming and uh, some of those details will be disclosed uh, at uh, FanFest uh, more thoroughly. So, so is, it, is it important to sort of make the, the Dust players feel more part of the universe in this way? Is that something that you really want to do or, or what, what's, the, what's the reasoning? Yeah, it's always been our vision that we want to uh, introduce the Dust players to this uh, larger universe. But in doing so, it's also important for us to not do that just on day one, because there's a lot of complexity. And I think that uh, it uh, probably wouldn't work because it would be just too much. So what we're doing now with these successive releases of Dust is introducing these features one at a time. Also, what we're expecting to see, which is similar to what we've seen in EVE Online, is that there will be a portion of our player base that's going to engage in this uh, more high-level, more complicated, you know, backstabbing and intrigue that mm -hmm. EVE is so famous for. So you could say it's kind of a pyramid. So in some ways, we're expecting there will be a top level of the pyramid in Dust as well. And those guys are the CEOs and the directors of the corporations. And they're generating a lot of the content for the other players. Mm -hmm. You can still engage in Dust uh, with it being like a typical shooter game where you're just taking a match after match after match and gaining you know, money from doing that and gaining skill points. But the interesting part is that most of those matches will now matter. Mm -hmm. And that's what's changing with the Uprising release. We're making it matter. So one, one another interesting thing that I, I sort of caught up on was the fact that you're sort of you're taking lessons from one game and, and moving them into the other. I, I guess this was an example of, of sort of the meta game in, in Eve coming into Dust, mm -hmm. but you're also sort of trying to bring some of that accessibility that you're you're developing for Dust into Eve. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? Yeah, when we uh, initially started talking about in house of doing um, Dust on a console. Now, that was one of the aspects that came up as a benefit of going onto the console, was that that is an environment 
that is known for having more accessible games, easier to pick up and play. And we really wanted to be in that environment where that was kind of the expected outcome. Because in the PC, we're pretty much masters of our own destiny. Mm -hmm. And if we decide that we want something to be complicated, there's no publishers and no consumers that are going to come back and tell us, like, this is way too complicated. Because that's kind of the home. That's what the PC is known for. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've actually welcomed that on the uh, PlayStation to get that feedback and work with the players there and understand how we can make some of our systems much more streamlined and actually more effective for them to use. And so, yes, now we're rolling out a lot of those uh, changes in uprising, and there will be more to come in successive releases of Dust. And we're taking these lessons now and we're reapplying them back to EVE, which, will hopefully, which should result in actually a smoother experience for players of EVE. All right. So FanFest is coming up and the 10-year anniversary is coming up. Things, things are looking really... Really, really exciting, but, but you also have the, the largest player base in EVE Online that ever since, since, since you began the game. That has to feel good. No, it definitely does. And I mean, we sold out uh, to FanFest in record time, so we're expecting quite the celebration there. You know, we are celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the game, and, and we're humbled and, and really happy to be at this point today, 10 years from when the game launched, and continue to grow. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All clear. Moving on to the objective. Overwatch. Planetary defenses have been knocked down. The Leviathan is taking critical damage. Won't be long now. 